Hey there, welcome to another episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane. This video is part of my hardware guide series, and today we're gonna to be talking about the Sega Dreamcast. I was a big time day one supporter of the Sega Dreamcast. I pre-ordered that console and I even helped one of my friends purchase one where he paid me back later. So when I say that I have a lot of love for the system, I really do mean it. It is one of my fondest memories with my friends. Now, because of that, I actually got to experience all of the hardware as it came out for the system. So. I know a little bit and I can probably help you figure out exactly what you're looking for for the Sega Dreamcast. Now, the first thing to think of is that there are multiple versions of the Dreamcast, uh, just in the US though. Um, I'm not going to really be talking too much about the Japanese variations because that's way deep into the weeds and we're just going to stick to the US consoles right now. So one version you'll see is just the plain white console. And the other one is the black console that says Sega Sports. Um, no other variation was actually officially released in the United States. Now you can get replacement shells to make them look different or even swap Japanese shells onto US systems so that you don't have to worry about like trying to region mod or anything like that. But you know, it's just for the sake of simplicity, we only got the white one and the Sega Sports Edition, that's the black one. Now, if you flip the console over, you'll see a sticker on the bottom, and there's a number that is actually in uh, a circle on the bottom of that sticker. If it's a zero or a one, congratulations, your system can actually play burned games. And we've actually gotten so good at burning the games that some of these games uh, ha contain their own boot code, so you don't even, even need a boot disk to be able to play a burned game of like Fantasy Star Online or Sonic Adventure or anything like that. You're the one they're hunting. The pirate. You seem somewhat familiar. Have I threatened you before? I make a point of avoiding familiarity with pirates. Ah. Well, then it would be a shame to put a black mark on your record. Uh, now, if in that circle on the bottom of the stick on the sticker that's on the bottom of the system, if it's two or higher, I'm sorry, you can't really play burn games. Um, and I know that um, that those systems are out there, uh, but as a general rule, this is how it goes. So a zero or a one, you can play burn games. Two or higher, you can't play burn games. Now. Light guns. In the United States, Sega did not lit, did not release an official light gun. There are official light guns released by Sega. They are in Japan and they do not work on US systems. So get that out of your head. Don't think that you're gonna get a Japanese light gun that's official from Sega and have it work over here. It just it's not going to. Uh, the unofficial light guns, like the Interact and uh, the Mad Cat Stunner and stuff like that, those are actually pretty good light guns. They're fairly accurate. Um, one of them's a little bit on the bulky side, but I have them both, I've used them both, and they, they work. Uh, the arcade controller was made not by Sega. It was actually officially licensed by Sega for the Dreamcast. But it's big, it's heavy, it feels like a real arcade stick because everything they put into it was pretty quality. In fact, uh, a lot of people have modified uh, broken arcade sticks for the Sega Dreamcast into normal fight sticks that they can use on the PlayStation 4 or the Xbox One or even computer. So it's very popular. Now the, the basic controller for a Dreamcast, well, you can tell that it was definitely inspired by the Sega Saturn 3D pad. 
Um, I kind of wish that they had kept the six buttons on the front, front face, but other than that, it's a pretty good controller. A lot of people um, don't like how it feels in their hands. I'm actually okay with it just because I kind of grew up like playing with it and so I'm kind of used to it. It also has two VMU slots. Um, honestly, I would say to only stick with official, officially branded uh, Sega Dreamcast controllers. I would not go with any of the third party ones because the third party ones can actually blow the fuse in the uh, controller ports on the system. And that's kind of a pain to replace, but once you start replacing that, you should just go ahead and get a resettable fuse. Now, we're going to go on to other things that are with the controllers. The VMU, or Visual Memory Unit. Uh, this thing looks like its own game system, and in a way it is. Uh, you could play certain games on it. I think there was like a version of Sega Swirl you could play on it. But I mainly used it to feed my mag, which was the little pet thing in Fantasy Star Online, or uh, play with the little pet chows, I think is what they're called, on uh, Sonic Adventure. I didn't really use the VMU other than the memory card after that. Uh, now you can transfer memory, like cop any, any uh, game saves that are copyable, or not copy protected, um, back and forth between VMUs. They take two CR2032 batteries in the back and honestly they don't last that long. But uh, the next evolution of it was the multi-memory. Now this thing it looks like a normal VMU except it's missing all of the LCD parts and all of the buttons. But it had four pages so basically you hit the button at the top and it swapped to a whole new memory bank. This was kind of important for games like Fantasy Star Online because you were only allowed to keep one character, if I remember right. You were only able to keep one character per page or per VMU, and having that was a major advantage. Now, the Rumble Packs were separate, and yeah, this is back in the day when you know, you had to buy Rumble to if you wanted it, and you had to plug it in and stuff. Um, they were pretty good. I like the the Dreamcast Rumble Packs a lot better than all of the other off-brand ones because they don't light up, uh, especially when you're trying to like add Rumble to your light gun. Um, it's kind of uh, annoying to have a bright light flashing in your face. Now, another thing that plugged into the VMU slot was the microphone. Now, there's only two games that I really know of that use the microphone. One was Seaman, and the other one was Alien Front Online. Alien Front Online used it as a communication tool. Um, Fantasy Star Online did not. Uh, it was too old of a game to take advantage of that. Uh, and Seaman, I mean, you, you talk to Seaman, and whatever it recognized, that's what it used. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is the Maracas. The Maracas are for Samba de Amigo. Um, it's just a musical instrument game uh, where you're just playing the rhythms and stuff, but you had to have the distance from the floor correct while you were playing, and then everyone saw you would pose. It's a really fun game. Uh, I enjoyed it quite a bit, but I don't think I could play that game without the maracas. Finally, on the controller's part, we're going to wrap it up with the keyboard and mouse. The keyboard and mouse came out honestly because of the uh, web browser that was put in with the Sega Dreamcast. That's right, this thing could get online and it could browse online. It wasn't very good at it, but it could do a serviceable job. Now, later on, there were certain first-person shooters that could actually take advantage of the keyboard and mouse, and let me tell you, they actually did a pretty good job. Now the mouse is a little bit on the older side, so it's an actual physical ball mouse as opposed to an optical mouse. So yes, that means that you actually have to take care of it and clean it. But uh, the keyboard was really uh, sought after because of the people who were playing Fantasy Star Online and how you could use uh, 
the keyboard to type very fast messages and stuff to be able to help each other out during the game. Speaking of online, the Dreamcast came out with a normal 56k modem uh, and it was great. It was, it was one of the first systems to have online play and it was the very first system to include the 56k modem straight out of the box. Now for a little bit more money you could buy the broadband adapter that plugs right back into where you took out the modem and swapped in the new one or swapped in the broadband adapter. But not a lot of people did that. Um, there was a few games that actually had issues with that and uh, it, it kind of detracted from uh, from the sales of that because you know who wants a device an online device where it, it's not 100% compatible with all of the online games uh, finally we have the power cable which is your basic figure 8 power cable uh, your AV cables which ranged anywhere from RF all the way up to uh, S video uh, although I hear HD Retrovision is working on some component cables. Um, let's see, there's the, the system did come with the composite cables, but you should be able to find S-Video cables pretty easily. The big thing is the VGA cables, uh, and actually it's not even a cable, usually it's a box where VGA plugs into it. Um, not every game is actually compatible with VGA mode, um, but I have to say that VGA looks beautiful on a Dreamcast. But that's all I've got for you guys. Uh, I hope that this actually takes some of the fear out of like trying to go out there and get a Sega Dreamcast so that you can play some of these wonderful, wonderful games. Um, if I've helped you in any way, or if you have any questions or anything like that about the Dreamcast, please leave them in the comments below. Take care, and I will see you guys on the next one. Well, that's it for this episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane, and I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. I have videos on the 1st and 15th of every month, and look forward to sharing them with you. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.